Hi, thank you for joining today's webinar, Social Media Strategy, Don't Work Harder, Work Smarter. Who am I? Well, I'm Alexis Barton. I'm a digital strategist here at InfoMedia. I also work as a copywriter and handle some social media management and have blogged for several years. So I have several years experience using uh, popular social media channels effectively and hope that you will learn some tips that you can take back and use yourself. If you are taking notes at home, you can find these slides on SlideShare. Let's get started. Raise your hand at home if you manage social media. It's pretty common today. Uh, it's a tool that most businesses and brands are using, uh, that they realize the importance of using in today's clients. And if you are about to begin, that's okay. These tips can be useful to you too. And if you are over managing social media, well, maybe you'll find some inspiration from the things we discuss in today's webinar. If you feel like you can't keep up, you are definitely not alone. It seems like to do it right, to be popular or effective on social media, that you have to be present 24 seven. And who has time for that? I certainly don't. But you can create the illusion that you're, you are posting all the time. You can definitely do that and do so in a way that makes sense for your business or brand. Today we're going to talk about a few things that I've learned in managing social media and maybe they will help you as you try to use it for your business, brand, or even your blog. We know we all need to use it and maybe sometimes it's a little intimidating, but I want to reassure you that it is definitely not rocket science. It is supposed to be fun and spontaneous and not feel gross, right? Uh, but figuring out how to check those boxes can be a little bit overwhelming because you get all these different messages and instructions and guidelines and then the, the algorithms change and kind of junk everything up. Uh, and so sometimes you can be a little bit uncertain. But I want to first tell you to, re to adjust your expectations. It's not necessarily easy to use social media, so perhaps we shouldn't expect it to be. There is a bit of a learning curve to it, and that's normal. Having a plan helps you simplify your approach. It can help you find your footing on social media, figure out what works best for you, and get in the habit of doing it regularly. Authenticity and consistency are key. So when you make a plan, stick to it and make sure that your messaging embraces um, authenticity, what makes you you, whether that's your brand or your business or your blog. That will endear you to your fans and followers and potential clients. They'll get a sense of your sincerity from that. What I will want to tell you not to do is to compare yourself. Don't compare yourself to what this brand or that business with 30 million fans or 10 million followers is doing because you are seeing it from the outside. You don't know what lengths that person or that company has gone to get those followers and you may not be willing to do those same things uh, for ethics reasons or whatever reason, budgetary reasons. So, don't compare yourself to what other people are doing. I try to find inspiration uh, from people who are successful already. I find patterns in what they do and then I try to adapt those patterns for my own purposes. So when it comes to social media, I know just enough to be dangerous and even though I will never coach football, let's just say, I can definitely learn from our first person. Nick Saban, the coach of the University of Alabama's Crimson Tide. He calls it the process. We call it a strategy. So how can you craft a winning formula that will work for your business or brand's needs on LinkedIn and Facebook or Twitter and Snapchat? What can you do to compete? and win against so much noise from your competitor's content? Well, there are several things you can do. First of all, commit to that process or strategy. 
Determine the type of content that you can comfortably replicate uh, on a regular basis, whether that's weekly or monthly. And that may be sharing your expertise, uh, giving your clients a shout out, giving your staff a shout out, talking about your company culture. It may be any of those things, but come up with a well-rounded content strategy and commit to it. Overcome adversity. Adversity is a major theme for Coach Saban. Better known in our world as algorithms, because every time an algorithm changes, you have to switch up what you're doing on a social media channel, more than likely. So fight that with consistency. Stick to the, that schedule of posts for when days when your staff is out of the office, whether it's due to vacation or illness, you're not stuck scrambling to get content put up because you've already planned ahead for those days. And even when you have to rush to meet a deadline, you know that your social media is covered. Further, you want to make sure what may hold you back in terms of your strategy or help you. Look at the plan of attack or look at your strategy and look at the analytics that you can measure once you have had several things post and had your fans or followers engage with it. The analytics tell you when people are responding or what they're responding to. And by observing and really studying your analytics, you can then make adjustments. So listen to your fans uh, when they show you what they want or what they don't necessarily want. And then go in and tweak your strategy. But again, don't let them rule your, your playbook. You're the coach, you're the one in control of this game. And then last but not least, roll with it. Let each channel play a distinct but cohesive part. Monitor those analytics, as I said before, uh, but then throw something else in the mix to keep it fresh and interesting. That may be trying to sponsor posts to see if you get a larger rate of engagement. Um, it may mean that you stick with what you're already doing. Again, Alabama never changes its uniforms, and that's fine too. Sometimes sticking with consistency and what works best is what works best. Uh, that makes your brand uh, easily recognizable. It means continuity for your clients. So really engage with those analytics once you've come up with a consistent plan that you can stick to. Okay, now for our next person, even though I may never sing a note publicly, I will never break out into karaoke, I still think this person, this entertainer, can teach us a thing or two where social media is concerned. Beyonce has used an ever-changing cast of group members to learn her craft and, and become famous, and then when she was comfortable, she stepped out solo into the spotlight. She's written the book on surprise releases that break the internet and people hang on her every post on Instagram or her website. She manages to reveal things that are intimate without necessarily telling her audience anything super personal, arguably effectively maintaining a semblance of privacy despite being one of the most well-known or easily recognizable women in the world. For our purposes as social media strategists and managers, figuring out what to post or tweet doesn't have to be a chore. We can find organic inspiration to put our tweets and posts in formation, just like Beyonce does. And we can find a way to strike the right balance in sharing information. Here's how we can do that. First, know when to go solo and when to utilize a team. You may have one social media star or manager on staff, but don't be afraid to involve other members of your staff where, it's, where it makes sense and where it's appropriate. One person doesn't have to do it all alone. Cast out your net and see what's going on in IT, see what's going on in HR, see what's going on in sales, and let them come up with a little report or post or slideshow that tells their story and ultimately contributes to your brand or business's story as a whole. At the same time, you have to strike a balance and know when too many voices will dilute or slow down when, what you need to accomplish. Next, you want to stay true to your roots. Align your strategy with your company's mission or story and let each phase of your content tell that part of your story, whether it's a post, a tweet, 
pictures, or video. Embrace who you are, even if it's not always perfectly polished, and even if it seems to fly in the face of a current popular trend. Who knows, you may start a new trend just by being yourself. Last but not least, make lemonade or make the best of challenging situations. If you're in a state right now of not knowing how to use Twitter, not knowing how to use Facebook Live, or not knowing how to use Snapchat, this is a, a powerful place because it's an opportunity to learn those new skills and develop great new habits instead of having to correct old ones. Further, remember that the internet never forgets. So be careful about who you allow to implement your strategy and make sure that it is, again, in a, a aligned with your company's mission and story and does not post anything that is negative or damaging to your company. Remember, your competition is always watching, just like your fans and followers are. So don't give them an edge or an advantage on you. Now for our last source of inspiration, I object sometimes to some of this person's methods, but ultimately I respect her relentlessness. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian West is known for contouring and highlighting her makeup to show the best face possible to the public. She's a master of spin when it comes to messaging and of maintaining or maybe even manipulating the public's attention during some very public crises. She's also known for product placement. So for, for us as social media managers and strategists, how can we show off our brand or company's best side and how can we own or break our corner of the internet? And where do you draw the line? How much is too much? Well, first, Monetize your assets. Use social media to highlight what you do well to current clients, and you'll draw potential clients that much closer. Share your expertise appropriately, but don't make every interaction a veiled attempt at well-begging for attention. If you're offering a class or a webinar, make sure the content is valuable. And don't be afraid to give away something for free, whether that is expertise at a casual lunch and learn, whether it is slides from a webinar, whether it is some advice in a blog post. Your clients will appreciate that and it will endear you to them and may even draw in some new clients and prospects for you. Remember, almost everything is copy. On Keeping Up With The Kardashians, we see every phase of life that the Kardashian family wants us to see. Well, for your purpose at your company or your brand, think holistically when it comes to your content. Whether that is a staff member or a whole department or your leadership taking over social media for a day to interact with your clients and fans and followers and prospects, um, maybe it means you go behind the scenes and show people up close and personal what it is you do and how it is that you do it. But think critically about how to show what you do and how you do it in a way that sets you apart. And at the same time, make sure you have a formal or informal plan in place to review your content themes and plans with your leadership, just to make sure you aren't sharing information that is proprietary or that may somehow cast your company or your brand in a bad light with your audience. Last but not least, know when you are, you are inching toward overexposure. Post regularly and use scheduling to your advantage, but that doesn't mean it needs to be around the clock. If you flood timelines with what people see as propaganda or shameless publicity, you'll ultimately alienate people. So in, examine your analytics to determine when your posts or tweets receive the most engagement and schedule them to post at those times. Last but not least, don't copy, just don't copy. The internet has a long memory. It knows when you plagiarize, it knows when you try too hard. Um, and so above all, following your mom's advice is probably your best bet. Be yourself. That's what will ultimately make you stand out on the internet, making the most of what makes you unique, not how well you are able to copy or parrot 
what other people are doing. So work hard to develop your own authentic voice and be in your own authentic perspective. Be realistic about what it is that you can accomplish and the time frame you have to accomplish it in so that you're not setting goals you have no hope of reaching at any point. Be consistent. This continuity shows your clients and prospects that you can be relied upon and that's something that people are looking for uh, in, in a business relationship. And last but not least, be patient because developing an audience and developing relationships based on uh, your social media presence takes time, it takes effort, and you have to be patient because the results are, may not and typically won't happen overnight. But with constant attention, authenticity, um, a realistic plan, and a consistent implementation of that plan, you can find some success on the internet. As I wrap up today's webinar, I want you to remember that you don't have to figure this out by yourself. You definitely don't. There are channels out there that are available to you. We're definitely one of them, so be sure to reach out to us at InfoMedia. Uh, you can call us, you can email us, you can check out our website, infomedia.com, for free resources at any time. Uh, you can also join us at one of our upcoming Lunch and Learns. These are opportunities for us to share our expertise uh, this month and this year with you, and we look forward to doing that, as well as networking and finding out sort of the things that you need and, and may find useful. And you can network with other businesses who are in the same boat and, and share kind of your perspective as well. Thank you for joining us today for today's social media strategy webinar. If you want the slides, they will be available shortly on SlideShare. And it's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.